Gavin Greenfield here. Hi everybody, emergency physician and transport physician and we are going to do a quick review of what the anion gap is. Very simple approach. So within the body, the positive, if, we, if, if this is all the cations here, so cations are the positive charged things, everything. So, you know, sodium, potassium, magnesium, whatever, has to equal the negative charged items in the body the anions. So things like albumin, phosphate, etc. tons. So these just, I think it's the concept of electro neutrality, but they have to be the same within the body. So when we talk about the anion gap, what do we do? We measure the, the uh, cations and we subtract the anions. So it looks like this. So if, if this is the measured cations and, and what's the main one we measure? It's sodium, right? So we'll draw sodium there. And then we've got our uh, measured anions and what we use for the anion gap is the uh, bicarb draw that quickly here HCO3 and <clears throat> the chloride so we know the anion gap is the sodium subtract the total of the bicarb and the chloride and the difference is the anion gap and, and, and that's represented by this line right here. So this area here would represent the anion gap. The other way of saying this, so these, these anions up here above this solid line, we don't measure. So those are the, all the other ones we, we mentioned. And, and the main one actually is albumin. And then up here are all the cations that we don't measure. So the anion gap is, is the measured cations subtract the measured anions or it's the unmeasured anions we can call that here unmeasured anions minus the unmeasured cations so this amount subtract this is the same value it's this number here and in a normal person this is kind of you know 8 to 16 we think of as a normal anion gap one thing we can, uh, uh, we, what we can see, as I said, that the, the major contributor to this unmeasured part is albumin. So if someone has, uh, if someone has a really low albumin, uh, then it's, the box is going to look like this. The actual unmeasured part is going to be much, is going to be smaller. And so this solid line will be somewhere, you know, up here. And so we've still got unmeasured anions, but it's smaller than our unmeasured anions here because our out because somebody has hypoalbuminemia, they're malnourished, or if they got liver failure or whatever. So we're still measuring the HCO, you know, the HCO, the bicarb, and and we're still measuring the chloride. But these, again, the top line has to be the same. The not the amount of anions has to equal the amount of cations. So if the unmeasured, if the albumin's small, then that unmeasured part right here is, is going to be represented by a smaller area. And so in this particular patient that we've represented right here, their normal anion gap is going to be something smaller than 8 to 16. I mean, who knows? Maybe it's going to be, I don't know, um, let's say, you know, 4 to 12 or something like that. So when you do, when you calculate an anion gap in this patient, and, and let's say they're at the lower end of there. So that patient, let's say their normal anion gap is six and you calculate their anion gap and it's 15. Well, traditionally you would say that's a normal anion gap, but if you have, if you have the knowledge that they have a really low albumin, you would actually uh, conclude that their anion gap in that patient is actually elevated. And then of course, we've got a differential diagnosis for an anion gap metabolic acidosis and we would apply that. But if you didn't consider that their albumin might be low, then you might conclude that that anion gap of 15 is normal. So it's helpful to kind of put that in perspective when you see, you know, chronically ill patients, patients with liver disease, um, you know, if you have access to old lab results, you can look up an albumin. And if, if an albumin is low, then you can conclude that that patient's normal anion gap is not going to be 8 to 16. It's going to be something lower than that. And so if you see a number, an anion gap that's 16 in that patient with an albumin, that is very low, you can again conclude that that is going to be a patient with an elevated anion gap metabolic acidosis and apply your differential diagnosis.